Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess Channel and welcome back to the TZEC Season 25 Super Finals between the two top engines Tallfish 16 and the Lila C0. So today's game I think is really really special one. Today's game is actually a repetition of a beautiful game that has been played in 1971 between the legendary Bobby Fischer against Mark Tamanov. Uh, we'll see here uh, actually Tallfish and Lila C0 battling it out in the Tamanov Sicilian. It's of course a very very pop popular Sicilian line now these days very often played in top grandmaster level but you see really again the differences between human chess and how change uh, how chess has basically changed because probably uh, back in the 70s maybe this approach by white to play aggressively against the man of the team was perfectly fine but now these days uh, with the development uh, with the development of engines now this particular line is not working bobby fisher as i said played this line very very often but uh, this line is actually not favorable for white this line is actually favorable for black and in this case uh, lila c0 had i think in the beginning an advantage in an early stage of the game the pre-arranged opening line was a little bit in black's favor but still with many opportunities for both sides so as i said really, really huge huge difference in approaches human chess and now this top ai chess between stockfish 16 and lila c0 so let's see now this beautiful fisher time out of stockfish versus lila c0 chess game with the white pieces the stockfish engine opened with the move e4 we have now the move c5 we have knight to f3 we have a knight to c6 and after move d4 c takes d4 knight to d4 e6 by Lila c0 the Taimano variation of the Sicilian defense now we have knight to b5 we have now the so-called Zen variation simply attacking further the d6 weakness uh, Lila c0 continues on with the move d6 and Stockfish makes further progress with bishop to f4 hits now this pawn on d6 three times you have to react with the move e5 we have bishop to e3 knight to f6 and now comes this pinning idea bishop to g5 the game is similar now to the Sveshnikov Lasker Pelican Sicilian if you're familiar with uh, this types of position with these types of structures with the same plans basically uh with the idea of course to maybe uh take out the knight continuing the game uh, applying the so-called bad bishop strategy not allowing of course uh Bla black's uh, dark square bishop to participate in the game then of course to play something like bishop to c4 knight to c3 maybe uh, occupy the d5 weakness and of course maybe later also attack the d6 weakness. Ba basically in this um structures when you have this backward pawn on d6 there are always these two weaknesses the weak score on d5 but also the backward pawn on d6 so still we are in the pre range line we have bishop to e6 here by uh lila c0 knight to c3 a6 kicking away the knight bishop to f6 first intermediate attack against the queen and now uh, g takes f6 has to be played of course queen to f6 leads into complications after knight to d6 so that's why for bishop to f6 g takes f6 knight to a3 here play by uh, uh stockfish 16 and now we're in the last pre pre-range move by the organizer here uh lila c0 was forced now to play the move knight to d4 the evaluation is 0 0.7 in black favor here so lila had now an advantage with the uh, with the black pieces but believe me or not actually lila c0 with the white pieces managed to defend this position so lila c0 got a draw out of this particular setup with the white pieces in the same position against stockfish as i said probably back in the 70s this maybe was a favorable continuation for, for white maybe uh, then um, in some chess books this was maybe good for white but you see now but with the development as i said at the beginning with the development of top engines this line is uh, almost like busted here black has uh, here a huge advantage white is now really really tough time to defend this position because okay let's stop a little bit invalid the position black has as i said the backward pawn on d6 has a weak score on d5 has uh, of course the bad bishop on f8 which is paralyzed by its own pawn but uh so far the issue is for uh for for white that now uh, in the next couple moves b5 will come into the game you lost your bishop pair and also what's the most important thing here to say the g file is open so here after move bishop to d3 now we'll see the difference in approaches for instance in the game uh, between uh, between taimanov and fisher fisher played here instead of this move bishop to d3 knight to c4 immediately then uh taimanov played simply f5 we have e takes f5 knight to f5 bishop to d3 and the issue in their game was that actually Taimanov made a huge blunder 
it's not okay maybe a huge blunder but it's really really positional mistake here by Taimanov rook to c8 although he had the immediate opportunity to play knight to e7 and as i said play simply d5 f5 and from this point on i think uh white will have really really tough time to battle maybe against this pawn storm here in the center of the board so these are the basic concepts of course we can support also the, the pawn on e5 with our bishop uh, with the move bishop to g7 but these three pawns are marching and they are supported by three minor pieces i think uh, uh black uh, could have a huge huge advantage also in this particular line so as i said a uh, huge difference here in the game uh, Stoffish played bishop to d3 in the fisher taimano game fisher played knight to c4 and as i said in the continuation f5 e takes f5 and then rook to c8 was not a good continuation by Tamanov. actually bobby fisher won the game with a spectacular with a spectacular endgame so here after move knight to d4 and bishop to d3 my question here for you is what would you do now uh, in this particular position with uh, with the black pieces what would be now your continuation maybe just for fun pause the video and try to see now the best continuation for black it's really, really a must see now move so as i said we're now not anymore in this pre-arranged opening from this point on the engines are calculating the position for themselves what would you do now in this position okay Leela and stockfish both engines played rook to uh, rook to g8 and there is now a huge huge problem what to do uh, here from white's perspective for instance if you try here g3 then the issue is you get bishop to g4 and you're getting destroyed on the light course here so it's not working so if you try maybe something like kingside casting then the issue is this one d5 d5 is letting now the position explode in the center of the board because after something like knight to d5 bishop to d5 e takes d5 queen to d5 you have a problem around the square g2 you have to play f3 then bishop to c5 is going to happen dark square problems here although black's king is a little bit in the center but uh, the dark square problems i think could cause many many position problems then in white in white's position so here uh, that's why after rook to g8 stockfish decided and lila c0 also played this particular line knight to c4 simply uh, playing actively to, with the knight uh, Sto uh, pardon me lila simply took stockfish challenge now lila with the move knight to e3 but now lila c0 simply retreats and stockfish at least least now uh, some kind of a control of the d5 square and also of the f5 square here uh, stockfish continues with the move h4 rook to c8 by lila c0 knight from c to d5 and now f5 simply exploiting now this overload of the pawn here against the knight on d5 you cannot take of course something like this the knight to d5 he takes d5 bishop to d5 uh win simply a piece and it's game over then for for white so that's why here c3 uh played by stockfish trying to kick away uh, now this knight from the square d4 again my question here for you is again tr just for fun pause the video and try to see again the best continuation here for black Okay, St here Stockfish got challenged with Lila's beautiful move f4. This is the way to go. If you play here c takes d4, then of course, look at this, after c e3, you have to play knight to e3. Then the bishop is coming into the game. You can maybe play knight to f5. Look at this, bishop comes on a more active square. Suddenly, the bishops are breathing here, in my opinion, not a good continuation anymore anymore for white. So that's why after f4, a Stockfish retreated to f1. We have a bishop to g4, queen to a4, bishop to d7, queen to d1, and now knight to uh knight to e6 here by lila c0 knight to d2 knight to c5 again a beautiful attacking move stockfish has to react plays now bishop to c2 so so far we have to say this is maybe also not the optimal position for the bishop here because of the blocked out pawn structure in the center of the board the dashwood bishop has a tough time to get back into the game but you see how lila c0 will play here really brilliant positional chess how lila c0 will eventually include this dashwood bishop into the game really, really instructive how these top engines are improving their piece activity although in the beginning as i said it's not really the optimal optimal setup here for the light for, for the dashwood bishop so after move with bishop to c2 we have bishop to g4 f3 bishop to h5 lila stays very active here against uh against uh, the queen on d1 this pawn is now a long-term weakness and in some lines maybe even the rook can support the attack with rook to g3 so the f3 pawn becomes now clear target in black's attack queen to e2 by uh, stallfish rook to g6 by lila a4 bishop to e7 so what should why do if you play knight to e7 then you basically got rid of a bad piece of your opponent the bishop on the dark square bishop on e7 was not of course a good piece uh of blacks on the other hand white's knight on d5 was an optimal piece was a powerful knight in the center of the board and if you 
in chess, of course, trade off a good piece for a opponent bad piece, then probably again you face many positional problems. Look at this after this potential trade. Okay, maybe we have still this d6 weakness, but look at this the rook is on g6. Uh, the f3 pawn is still weak, so the knight is powerful here in c5. The king is perfectly fine here in the center of the board, in my opinion. Again, a much, much better continuation here for black after bishop to e7. That's why uh, Stoffer simply castled queenside, knight to <coughs> d7, trying to compete against this unpleasant, really, really against this annoying knight on d5 we have bishop to b3 knight to b6 uh, rook to g1 competing against this rook on g6 rook to c5 very active play here by lila c0 lila applies now the principle of the most active square so where we're placing the pieces on the most active square that's possible so now with rook to c5 the rook gains new activities also maybe with some attacking chances on the fifth rank but of course also here on the c file we have queen to d3 king to f8 nothing spectacular here king to b1 knight takes d5 finally uh lila gets rid of this annoying knight on d5 bishop to d5 queen to c7 protecting of course the b7 pawn we have rook takes g6 and now h takes g6 again the position gets more and more blocked out which is in some lines good for the knight but still i kind of feel that this bishops could come into the game because still we have progressive ideas with g5 still we have progressive ideas with f5 uh, if this bishop moves we will eventually get the move d5 also b5 is possible so this is not really a blocked out a completely blocked out pawn structure so far as i said the darko bishop is not good but we will try to get it uh, somehow into the game by pushing some pawns by letting this position explode because the bishops love of course the open game after rook to c1 that uh, stoffish played here lila says he real continues with a5 we have rook to f1 queen to b6 uh, rook to h1 king to g7 and now king to c2 so here i think white is lacking in good moves white is really, really trying maybe even to do perpetuals trying maybe somehow force a draw not not a good um, position for for any of these pieces this bishop is active but it doesn't have support of course it doesn't have another piece that could support the attack on this side of the board we have bishop to f6 we have b3 rook to c7 bishop to c4 and now bishop to d8 slowly but surely lila gets now finally the dark square bishop into the game look at this after queen to d5 queen to c5 couple straight of queens no, uh, nothing spectacular now the game is more simplified but finally uh, lila c0 has now the opportunity to activate the bishop on b6 and then maybe afterwards on e3 f2 many many good squares then for for the bishop after bishop to d5 that stockfish played lila continues with the move b5 this is the way to go as i said when you have the bishop pair on the board you don't allow your opponent to create static position you let the position explode that's the way to go after king to d3 here by stockfish we have now the move b4 c4 uh, you see how um, stockfish is desperately trying now to lock somehow the position to keep the position blocked out but lila c0 has another plan of course activating now the dark square bishop because still there are many many opportunities on this side of the board g5 and also f5 are progressive plans in black's position king to e2 by stockfish 16 rook to c8 knight to f1 and now rook to h8 as i said coordinating uh, the attack now towards the side at least where, where we can push some pawns as i said on the g file on the f file that could be some kind of an activity f rook to h3 king to f8 by uh, lila c0 knight to h2 g5 very very crazy stuff because look at this what happens if you play uh, h takes g5 then you have this one bishop to f3 uh f rook to f3 then we simply pick up this one and this could be very very dangerous uh here for uh for white to handle bishop to e3 rook to d2 uh, this pawn is weak so uh, in this particular scenario again black should be much 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 better so after king to uh pardon me after move uh, g5 we have king to f1 by uh the uh, stoffish 16 bishop to g6 by lila h5 and now a beautiful move f5 uh, here by lila c0 you cannot of course pick up the bishop because the rook is hanging but now with this move f5 lila c0 found a way how to activate the bishop pair in a perfect way we have king to g2 connecting now uh, the king to the rook uh lila retreat we have e takes f5 bishop to f5 knight to g4 bishop to c2 attacking now the pawn on b3 there is not a good way that you can protect it in a different way so that's why uh lila uh pardon me stoffish played simply c5 uh simply gave up a pawn just in order to hold somehow this position around the square b3 somehow connect the bishop to the pawn uh lila c0 took bishop to c5 but now never knight to f6 again bishop to f5 so 
uh, here Lila created here two very very dangerous pawns or maybe here some dangerous pawns the main concept is now maybe even sacrifice one of these pawns just in order to create two connected pass pawns two connected pass pawns in an end game are almost worth like a minor piece so as i said now with maybe e4 or g4 we're trying to break and enter and then of course let the pawns roll here uh in the center of the board after bishop to f5 rook to h1 king gets closer knight to g4 rook to f8 you see lila is preparing slowly but surely these progressive ideas here on this side of the board h6 stockfish uh attacks the king the king gets cornered here on h8 but again uh stockfish doesn't have support here on this side of the board doesn't have any more attacking chances you have this annoying pawn but now uh, the game will turn over here in on uh, in black's favor so after rook to f1 here by stockfish now bishop to e3 beautiful move here by uh, lila c0 if you play knight to e3 then after f takes e3 you're running into this types of stuff we simply go for this pawn will attack uh, um, also the king so you will eventually lose the battle then on on the c file you can maybe uh, step back with the king but now we pick up the pawn and still we have uh, many many extra pawns so in a fully end game stage again this should be completely completely winning here for black so that's why for rook to f1 we have bishop to e3 as we said uh, rook to d1 uh, stockfish didn't dare to simplify the game further by trading off more pieces rook to c8 lila occupies now uh, the open file the c file is also threatening rook to c2 we have knight to f6 rook to c2 anyway by the fish king to h1 and now bishop to c5 we have a knight to e4 king to h king to h7 rook to d2 rook to c1 king to h2 and now king to h6 so lila grabs another pawn has now three extra pawns has now the bishop pair although stockfish is somehow holding the positional light scores but as i said after knight to f6 we have a king to g6 knight to g4 rook to c3 and now uh, after rook to g2 this progressive plan by uh, lila c0 e4 as i said that was our main plan in the beginning somehow letting the position explode after f takes e4 now bishop to c8 here by uh, lila c0 now the whole concept is of course somehow to advance the pawn to g4 now we have two connected passers so far as i said again uh, white is holding for a while this position but this position is simply collapsing when we attack the knight it's a devastating devastating position here for white bishop to c6 we have king to h5 now the the the, the, the knight is attacked knight to f2 and now finally mission accomplished g4 two connected passers here on the fourth rank uh here it's almost a position i think that you can resign so we have e5 uh, we have uh, g3 we have king to h1 bishop to f2 here um stockfish lost even the piece g takes f2 here by uh, lila c0 king to g2 stockfish simply uh, pushed upon further to e6 but lila c0 doesn't care played uh, b5 bishop to b5 a takes b5 get simply the uh, king closer f3 and here after king to uh, g3 e8 the promotion rook to c1 uh, queen to e1 and after f takes e1 it was a beautiful checkmate here by lila c0 against stockfish 16 Pooh, this was really incredible because it was one of the rare pairings in which lila c0 won the game and then managed to uh, play a draw in the reverse game really very really crazy stuff uh, with the black pieces as i said this line is not so good for white let's go back to the beginning of this opening stage bishop to f6 as i said this is not a really an optimal position this knight is too powerful f5 d5 are progressive moves as we said in the beginning rook to g8 very very dangerous to handle so bobby fisher won uh, his game against mark tamanov and he won also against tigran petras and also in 1971 so fisher probably played uh, this opening very very often because he was maybe sick, uh, sure that this is perfect perfect line of course there are some weaknesses in black's camp but you see uh black has many many progressive ideas here black has really, really great chances in, in this types of positions so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really, really enjoyed it a lot interesting ideas uh, lila c0 finally won a game fi finally won a pairing game uh pairing match against stockfish 16 usually stockfish was the engine that always managed to get a draw out of the seemingly bad pre-arranged openings and then eventually won its game with the white pieces so now lila c0 did the same but still it's a pure domination by stockfish as i'm recording this video the result is plus six in stockfish favor still only 32 rounds have to be played so there are maybe some chances for lila c0 but lila c0 has to now play perfect chess without losing games 
in my opinion, it's almost a mission accomplished, uh, mission, um, not, accomplish, uh, not a good um, um, opportunity for Lila. Lila will have a tough time. It's, I think, again, a new TCEC season uh, for the Stalfish engine. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. We haven't seen so far uh, this opening uh, here on my YouTube chess channel. Very, very progressive ideas here by these two top engines. Uh, and if you want to see more interesting chess games like this, check out our Comp the Chess Games Play by Computer series here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what do we say chess is the best of course